Hey, what is up everybody? We're playing the Lego Harry Potter collection. In this video, we're covering all of the collectibles that are in the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry Hub section of the years one through four portion. So let's get started. There's a lot to get. We're gonna start off in the Gryffindor dorm rooms and the first collectible to get is a golden brick. This is obtained by shooting the tops off of all of the beds. The next thing to grab is our first character in the Hogwarts section. If you head to the right side of the Gryffindor bedrooms, you'll find this chest. Just shoot it with any spell and you'll get your next character. On the left hand side, you should see a suitcase similar to the one that we just shot on the right, but there's a plant on top of it. Move that plant with Wingardium Leviosa and then shoot the suitcase to get the red brick. All of the red bricks can't be just collected. Once you pick them up, you do need to take them to a corresponding owl in that section who will fly away with the red brick and then you will have it collected. All right, so now we need to switch to Hermione and go to the grandfather clock and interact with that to enter the time turner version of the room. And keep in mind that we're going after all of these after we've beaten the game so that we have some characters that we can use for certain parts. But once we're in the time turner version, go to the same suitcase that had the red brick and shoot that for our next character. All right, so moving to the northern side of this room in the Time Turner version, you'll see a chest that you can shoot. Just shoot that and jump in and you'll actually fall down to grab our next golden brick. All right, so hop out of that and on the right hand side where the grandfather clock was is another suitcase that has a golden or a silver lock on it. Shoot that silver lock with Reducto and then you can collect your next character out of the suitcase. So that's going to wrap it up for the Gryffindor dorm bedrooms. So exit through the door here and you're going to find yourself in the Gryffindor commons room. And on the left hand side, you should see a student jumping up and down on a couch. If you just shoot that with a spell, the couch will actually eat him up and spit him out in a kind of cube form. And then you need to shoot the student and he'll kind of unravel and piece himself back together and you'll have saved that student. Also in this room behind that couch, is a next character it's right here where i'm jumping i had already collected it but it's right here behind the couch all right so exiting the gryffindor common room will put you into the house hallway which is the hallway that will lead us to all of the houses kind of dorm rooms respectively the first thing that we need to do in this hallway is to shoot all of the house banners there's five of them so we go to the left we can hit the slither you know the slithering uh, banner there's two gryffindor banners on the left and right there's going to be one Hufflepuff banner and one Ravenclaw banner. And when you shoot all of them, you'll get your next golden brick. All right, so the next thing that we're going to have to do, one, you're going to have to open up all the entryways to the different houses by shooting that, you know, Bogart chest and getting rid of that pixie and things like that. But we're also going to have to use different characters in order to get different types of these collectibles. So you want to make sure you're doing this after you have beaten the story missions. And then you can access these Polyjuice potions and select different characters as we're kind of walking around Hogwarts. So the first character that we're going to go ahead and get is we're going to get a Hufflepuff character. And as we're going through this collectibles in this, you know, large Hogwarts area, I will point out when we need to get different characters. Everything will also be timestamped. So if you're missing something and you need to come back, I'll have it timestamped as well. So once you get a Hufflepuff character, head into the Hufflepuff uh, dorm entrance room. And the first thing that we're going to do is hop into this cabinet here in order to get some earmuffs that will allow us to pick up the Mandrake. Once you pick up that, you can walk around the room and smash these three glass containers. And once you smash all of the glass containers, you'll get your next character. Similarly, keeping the Mandrake in our hands, just place it into this pot that's in the back right of the room. And once you put him in the pot, you'll save your next student in peril. All right, so once we've done that, now we can enter into the Hufflepuff common room and you need to use your Hufflepuff character to wave at this painting. Again, if you're not using Hufflepuff, it will not open. That's why we have this guy. So we're gonna walk in now. The very first thing that you're gonna see is a silver lock right here, right in front of you. You use Reducto on that. And then you'll find a cake that you can use Wingardium Leviosa to give to the character that's in the painting who will destroy it and subsequently give you your next golden brick. 
from that golden brick, we're going to kind of head to our left and up into this central portion where all these yellow couches are. You're going to see a plant in the fireplace. It'll have a leaf on the left and right. If you destroy both of those, the plant will destroy and a student apparel will be freed. From that fireplace, let's just head back towards the screen. Now we're going to go to the left side of the Hufflepuff common room and you'll see a painting. Just hit that painting and then it will drop a cake out for you. Then shoot that cake several times just with a general spell. And after you shoot it a couple times, you will get your next character. Now we do need to enter in the Hufflepuff dorm room, which is kind of tricky. So I'll show you how to get in there. You need to use Wingardium Leviosa on this candle stand, which will open up the Mandrake entrance down there in the middle. So if you go to the left to grab your earmuffs, then you can go down and grip, you know, grab this Mandrake. And then if you take the Mandrake all the way to the left hand side and you place it into the basket, that will weigh down this button and allow the door to open. So it's kind of a tricky thing to you know, open. So I showed you how to do that. But once you've got that door open, now we can enter into the Hufflepuff dorm room. And the first thing that we can do right near the uh, entrance is just shoot this chest, which will allow you to build a radio. And once you use Wingardium Leviosa to build that, the next character will respond right here. The next thing that we're gonna do is get our next red brick, which is in the center of the Hufflepuff dorm bedroom. There's a barrel with some plant life coming out of it. If you just hit that with a normal spell, the plant will grow and it will sprout a lot of flowers. And what you need to do is destroy every flower with any spell. And once you destroy all of the flowers, the red brick will spawn and you'll be able to take that to the owl to get your Christmas red brick. All right, so let's move back out to the house hallway now. So what we need to do is go back to our Polyjuice Potion, and now we need to get a Ravenclaw character. So head back, and you can take whoever you had as your Hufflepuff character, and now change that to a Ravenclaw character. Now, again, keep in mind, if you don't have these unlocked, I will have everything timestamped if you need to come back to this section. But once you have a Ravenclaw character, we're going to head up the stairwell into the Ravenclaw dorm entrance. And right to your left, you should see a gate. Just shoot that and then use Wingardium Leviosa on the pieces and that will spawn our next character. Huh? All right, so once you've collected that, head to the right and just kind of follow this path all the way till you get to the end where you'll see a door that you'll need to use in Ravenclaw character in order to enter and you'll enter the Ravenclaw common room. The first thing that you need to do is shoot the chest that's in the top middle. Shooting this chest will shoot out a Quidditch ball that will kind of fly around the room. You don't have to do anything. It will fly around automatically, eventually landing to the left hand side and spawning your next character. All right, from that character, if we hop down to the bottom, you'll see this kind of middle table. If you use Wingardium Leviosa on it, it will kind of form a bird-like structure with you know, missing a head and a tail. And what we have to do is go around the room and find the different pieces to it. And there's four of them. The first one is right here on the right hand side. The other two are right by the fireplace to the left. So if you kind of walk over to the left here, you'll see two pieces. And all you have to do is use Wingardium Leviosa on those and it will automatically take them over there. And then the last piece is kind of right at the very forefront of the screen, which is the tail and the, or the wings, I should say. And then once you've kind of placed all of those pieces, if you just go up to it and shoot it with X, it will turn into a bird and fly away. And when it does that, it will leave behind the red brick for you to collect. And now take that to the owl to get the Hogwarts crest detector. All right, so our next collectibles of golden bricks gonna encompass things in this room and in the Ravenclaw bedroom, but there's five golden books that we need to hit. The first one's on the back wall in the bookcase. You can see the second one here bouncing up and down. Once you kind of shoot that, then you'll have to use Wingardium Leviosa to put it into the bookcase, then subsequently shoot it. 
The one on the right, you saw me use Wingardium Leviosa to put it up there. And you, then once you put it up there, you also need to shoot that. And once you've shot those three, then you can progress on into the Ravenclaw dorm bedrooms. And you should see this golden book underneath this bed here. If you just shoot it with your magic spell, it'll make the bed fly off. Um, which I guess it just flew out and that guy had a good thing to wake up to and then the fifth and final ones all the way on the bed to the right again shoot that with just any spell it'll hover up and you can shoot the golden brick to get your fifth and that will give you your golden brick. Also the bed on the far left hand side you can actually hit the bed that will cause the character to spawn and then just jump on the bed and jump all the way up to grab that character. Also in this room is our fourth student in peril. There's a kid down here kind of being scared by this book. If you shoot the chain that's next to the book, it will chain up the book and you will free the student in peril. All right, so once we've collected all that, we can head back to our house hallway. And again, go back to the Polyjuice Potion portion. And now we're gonna select a Slytherin character but we wanna make sure we have one that has dark magic as well. We're gonna use dark magic several times throughout this collectible guide. I like to pick Tom Riddle a lot because he has parcel tongue, dark magic, and Slytherin. He's very useful. But also, going into the Slytherin dorm rooms, we need to take a very strong character as well. So use Hermione or whoever you had other than Harry and pick a very strong uh, character that can be Hagrid or Victor Crumb or anybody else that you have that's very strong. So you should have a Slytherin character and a very strong character. Once you have those, we're gonna head all the way to the left-hand side. We're gonna go into the Slytherin dorm entrance. And the first thing that you're gonna notice is a bunch of grates on the ground that have silver locks. We're gonna use our Reducto spell to shoot all four of those locks off. Um, so you can see I'm just gonna go around the room and shoot all of those locks with Reducto. Once you do that, there'll be enough pieces for you to build a chain that will place it on the right-sided wall back here. So now we have two heavy chains, one on the left and one on the right. So you need to use your heavy character, or not your heavy character, your very strong character to pull both of those heavy chains. And when he pulls both of those heavy chains, the lid on this fountain will kind of move out of the way, and then you can hop onto that, and it will kind of shoot you up to your next character piece. All right, so moving on, again, pick your Slytherin character in order to open up the doorway that will lead into the Slytherin common room. And when you're in here, right near the entrance, you should see a painting. Uh, if you shoot that with any spell, it will shoot out a box to land in between these two couches. Um, so once you do that, you can just head in between the two couches, shoot the box that he throws out, and that will be your next character. All right, heading back to the entrance of the Slytherin common rooms, there's five green lamps that we need to use Wingardium Leviosa on. The first one being right beside the painting that we just used. The second one is on the table on the back end of the left side. And then if we go to the right hand side, there's three more. One's on top of this bookcase, and this one's kind of difficult. You really need to get right up next to the bookcase in order to get that. And the fourth and fifth are on the back side of the room. And once you use Wingardium Leviosa on all of those green lamps, your next character will spawn right in front of the entrance to the Slytherin dorm bedroom. So once we pick up that, we can go ahead and make our way into the Slytherin dorm bedroom itself. And the first thing you can do is immediately when you walk in, shoot the bookcase that's to your left, and you'll free the next student in peril. Now just keep in mind you do need to, once you shoot that bookcase out of the way, you do need to walk up and touch the student in peril to free him. So don't just shoot it and walk away. Alright, so moving on, once you freed that student in peril, now head to the right side of the room and you should see kind of sitting out in the open, there's nothing you need to do, a red brick for you to collect. So grab that and head back over to the owl for collecting the score times four. All right, so from that red brick still in the Slytherin, you know, dorm bedrooms, head to the back right and you should see a chest that you can shoot. Simply shooting that chest will put a bunch of stuff into this kind of hot tub, which will put some kids in it as well. And the golden brick will spawn right in the middle for you to grab.
All right, so heading back to the house hallway, now we're going to go down this entrance into the grand staircase. And now I've walked all the way to the bottom of the grand staircase. Um, you can see where I'm at. There's gonna be a picture of a Quidditch character above this golden knight statue. Simply shoot that and he'll throw the Quidditch ball out kind of towards the screen. And then what you need to do is you need to kind of progress up the grand staircase by interacting with the different paintings that will allow the staircase to move. And we're going to move all the way up to more of those movable sections all the way until you get to the, the third actual Quidditch character that has the Quidditch ball. And she will throw it back out the screen. And you probably noticed the second one is that actually we passed up. So you have to go back. And once you go back to this one, he will throw the ball up all the way to the top of the grand scare staircase, which will go into the painting with the dog who will throw out a bone and the golden brick will be up there for us to grab. So we're gonna grab that uh, as we get up there. I'll remind you to grab it, but on the way up, right in front of this blue door here, you should see a flower pot to the left and the right. If you shoot the flower pot once, it will put flowers in them. Shooting both of them again will make the flowers go way up in the air and spawn your next character. So from that, we're gonna head up uh, into the kind of final area of the grand staircase. You should see this statue here with a candle on the left and the right. Use Wingardium Leviosa on the candle to the left to light the right one and your next character will spawn. So now we can progress all the way to the top of the staircase, get that golden brick that we had made spawn earlier, but also another student in peril is at the very top of the staircase. Just shoot the spider webbing that is encasing him and you will free him. All right, so let's move down to that blue door again that was in the grand staircase. And just, you have to shoot that door in order for it to open. So shoot it with any spell, just X. And once it opens, now we can enter the Muggle Studies classroom. And the first thing that we're gonna do in here is get a golden brick. And to do that, we need to free three bunnies. The first one is freed by shooting this picture of the owl who will drop a mail item that you can then place into this mailbox and the bunny will scurry off. The second one, you'll need to come to this material over here and build yourself a staircase in order to get up to this top shelf. Uh, you do have to get up here to hit this. You can't shoot it from below, it won't let you. But once you get up there and shoot it, you'll free your second bunny. And the third bunny is all the way to the right hand side to this TV. You need to shoot the TV four times. Once all three bunnies have been freed and they're in there spinning away in their wheels, the car will buzz off and you'll get your next golden gun. From the golden brick, just turn around. You should see a printer on the left table here. Shoot the printer and it will print off a picture of a red brick. Once it prints off the picture, the red brick will also appear on the table and you can take that to the left to the out. After we've collected that red brick, head to the right sided table and you'll see a bobblehead shoot the bobblehead it'll spawn another bobblehead shoot that bobblehead and it'll spawn another bobblehead as well as your next character token right beside that character token is like a you know hovering vacuum just shoot that with x and it'll fly off and it will cause the token to appear up in the window here so once it flies out of the window you can go up there and grab that character token From that character token, head back to the left-hand table. You should see a computer and a monitor. If you shoot the computer first, you'll notice that a ball kind of spawns on the monitor. So then shoot the monitor. It'll have like a load screen and your last character of this room will spawn on top of the computer. All right, so back out to the grand staircase. We're gonna go up to the top level again. And you, again, you must have completed all of the story levels to even do this part. So again, I highly recommend you do all the story components before we go to our you know, collectibles of Hogwarts. But once you do, you can interact with that kind of statue to create a staircase to lead you to Dumbledore's office. And the first thing that we're gonna do in here is just walk straight forward. You should see a chest that has a lock you can shoot with Reducto. So shoot Reducto on that lock to get your next golden brick. From that golden brick, if you just walk towards this red phoenix, it will just burst into flames simply by walking in front of it. And once it does, then you can grab this uh, red brick 
and take that back near the entrance where the owl is to collect the invincibility red brick. From the owl where we turn in our red brick, just kind of go to the other side of the entrance on the right hand side. You'll see this kind of coat rack with some things hanging on it. Just go ahead and shoot those with any spell and the next character token will spawn here for you. Now you're going to have to do some things in this room to collect all the pieces to destroy everything in order to activate this strength potion. Even if you have Hagrid or a very strong character with you, it will not let you use them on this. You do indeed need to finish that potion section and build that. And once you do, then you can go up to this chain up on the top of the back of the room and pull that heavy chain and it will spawn all these planets right in front of Dumbledore's desk. Now you can go down there and just use any spell you want to and just target all of the planets. And essentially what you want to do is just blow all of them up. And after you've blown all of them up, then you can again shoot the sun, which will fly away and it will spawn a hat right beside Dumbledore's office. Use Wingardium Leviosa on that to get our next character. From that character token, again, this is why we brought a character with dark magic. You want to head behind Dumbledore's office, and in the back here, you'll find a chest that you can use dark magic on. So go ahead and do that and get our final collectible in, Dumb in Dumbledore's office. All right, so let's move on. We're going to go to the bottom of the grand staircase now and exit through this doorway, which is going to put us into Hogwarts main lobby. All right, so this is the main lobby. We'll reference this several times. The first thing that we can get in here is a student in peril. If you go to the left-hand side over here, there's several books that you can cast Wingardium Leviosa on, and then you can use these as stairways to get to the very top here. Right up here where I just collected that blue Lego is a student in peril, so I'd already collected him before, but he'll be right here. Once we've collected him, there are six candles in this area that we need to light. One of them is right above this doorway, right next to where that student in peril is. The second one you can see is right here above this golden knight. You're gonna have two to the left and right of the bottom doorway. And then we're gonna have one above the knight right here on the right hand side. And the sixth and final one is on the second level on the back wall. Once you shoot all of those candles, your next golden brick will spawn. Next collectible is going to require us to use some torches not only in this room but also in the room following this one. So there's six torches in this area and then there's three in the next. So the six in this room, you got three on the right hand side. You can see two at the, you know, on the stairwell there and one at the back right. And on the left hand side, we've got again three in kind of similar positions as the right hand side, kind of symmetrical. So you're going to activate all six of those. And then where we're gonna go is we're gonna go to the right-hand side, up the stairwell, and we're gonna exit here, which is gonna put us into the outer corridor. And the final three torches are in here. So you see one to the left and the right of the exit that we just came out of. And the last torch is kind of around the corner behind a lock that we need to hit with Reducto. So you need to hit Reducto on that lock, and then you can use Wingardium Leviosa to get our next character. In this same area are a few panels on the wall that we need to hit with X to turn them around. The first one has a lock that you need to shoot with Reducto to be able to turn it around. So once you shoot that, then you can hit it. Um, so that one's right there to the left. And the other two on the right hand side, there isn't any locks on these two. You just need to shoot them with any spell. Um, I do tend to have to target this one because there's flowers that tend to just take a random shot. Nonetheless, once you have shot all three of those, you'll get your next character token. All right, so we're gonna progress on to the clock tower courtyard. So head to the left from this uh, you know, outer corridor and we're gonna again be in the clock tower courtyard. Again, we will reference this area several times. So the first thing is that, you know, and I've already kind of destroyed some of the statues that are around this fountain earlier in my gameplay, but you can't miss it. There's a bunch of statues around this central fountain here. And once you destroy all of them, you will be able to use Wingardium Leviosa to build a armored knight who will then pull this plunger uh, out of the center of the fountain. And when he does that, he will also pull out a red brick for you to collect. 
So go ahead and grab that red brick and the owl that you want to turn it into is on the back wall. You can see him on the back left there. So go ahead and pick this up and run back there and we will get our collect ghost studs. All right, so from that owl turn-in spot, if you just kind of head towards the screen to the left-hand side, you'll see one of the students being bullied by a couple of other students. So what you want to do is use your magic and shoot all of the bullies. And when you do that, the other student will be very happy that you saved him and you'll save your next student in peril. so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to grab some earmuffs and a mandrake to break some glass cases so the you know closet where you can get your earmuffs is on this left hallway over here so go in there with any character grab your earmuffs and then what we can do is we can head to the right hand side of the courtyard and you will find a mandrake that is sitting in a basket so go ahead and pull him out and just follow my path you know I'll speed it up here a little bit because they're kind of scattered throughout the entire courtyard but there's one right by the basket there's one right here to the left side of this hallway. There's another one all the way at the end of this hallway. You can't really see it right here, but you see the number pop up. It's right where I broke it right there. And then the other one is going to be uh, in the courtyard itself. You can see it down here to the left of this door, this wooden door. So that's the fourth one. And the fifth one is going to be to the right hand side um, of this courtyard. You'll see me smash that. And when you get all of those broken, you will get your next character. All right, so after we have, you know, used the fountain and that knight kind of pulled the plunger out, you can actually now get on that plunger and we'll be able to clean up these green goos that are just kind of sitting out in the courtyard. Now you'll see I'm actually not getting the marker for finishing these. I'll have to go back. You can't just hop over them as I'm doing here. You do need to kind of stay on it for a second until it's completely clean and you get the indicator, you know, X out of five is done. So now I've got to go back and finish cleaning up. Uh, what I started. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish cleaning up these goo piles. And once you finish cleaning up all of those, you'll get your next character. All right. So for our next uh, collectible, we need to get a character that has dark magic. So once you, if you didn't have someone, there is a polyjuice potion right here. So make sure that you pick a character that has dark magic. Again, I'll point out all of the times throughout this guide where you're going to need somebody that has a particular skill. But for this one, we're going to need one with dark magic. You can see this kind of black and red knight to the left of the pendulum of the clock tower. If you use dark magic on that knight and then you hop onto the flying magic broom, what's going to happen is you're going to see a bunch of Lego pieces that spawn above you. Um, you don't really need to collect all the gold ones, but you do need to collect all of the blue ones. Once you collect all of the blue gold or the blue Lego pieces, the golden brick will spawn right here in front of the entrance. All right, so moving on, you know, after you've destroyed a bunch of stuff, you'll eventually probably see this green key laying in the ground of the courtyard. You're going to need to use that to open the lock that's on the right side of the clock tower. So once you've done that and opened this way, we can now progress into the clock tower itself. As soon as you're in the clock tower, immediately on your left hand side, you should see a student in peril that's trapped in some spider webs. You really can't miss that one. So go ahead and grab that. So after you've grabbed that student in peril, go ahead and cast Immobilus on these, you know, pixies that are up here. When you do that, it'll stop these things from spinning so we can get to the second level later. But our next collectible is a red brick. On the bottom level, you'll see a chest to the left and right of these kind of, you know, little towers that have a clock on them. Once you shoot both of those chests, then you'll have some clocks that you need to match up with those. Just match the top of the clock color to the color of the, you know, little tower that you're standing them on. And when you match all four, the red brick will spawn right in the middle. So now you can grab that red brick and you needed to shoot these pixies because the where you know where you turn this in is up on the top level. All right, next up is a gold brick. Some people say they've had trouble getting this to spawn, but if you do it the way that I show you, it will work every time. Do it in the order that I'm showing you how to do it. This has been reported to be a glitched one, but nonetheless, shoot the painting first 
and then put the purple gear into the gears of the clock tower. Do that before you interact with the snake parcel tongue or anything on the left hand side. Once you've done that, you use a character with parcel tongue on the snake who will spit out an egg and another snake will come and eat the egg and go into the hole here. Once that happens, now you'll see that the clock tower is moving, the bell activates, and the golden brick should fall out here right in the middle for you. Also, after you use parcel tongue on the snake door, you the other snake that ate it, his tail will be sticking out. Just shoot his tail with any spell to get your next character. All right, now we're going to enter the you know the time turner version of this room so you can find a grandfather clock on the bottom floor on the right hand side so we're going to take hermione over there and we're going to activate that clock now we're going to enter the time turner version of this room right in front of you in this room is the first character the milkman now what you're going to have to do is stop the spinning uh you know circles so that you have a stairwell again so what you have to use is the left one. You have to have the character stand on that and then your other character run up here. Once you do that, take Hermione up here and break this lock with Reducto and then interact with the book so that will spawn your next character. Also interacting with what that book did launch some pieces out. You probably noticed that. That's pieces to the clock tower. The other pieces can be got from the painting on the left side of the room. Simply shoot it with any spell. Now you're going to have both hands of the clock that you can build onto the clock tower face using your Wingardium Leviosa spell. Now you can't do the next step because you need to bring another character up here. And the way that you do that is use Luma Solum on the Devil Snare that's on the right side of the room which will allow you to use Wingardium Leviosa to rebuild this statue who will pull the chain and stop the rotating stairwell so your allies can come up. And once you have both people up, one will interact with each hand of the clock to put it in the right position and get your next golden brick. All right, so we're done in the clock tower. We're gonna head back out to the clock tower courtyard. This time we're gonna head to the center of the clock tower right at the swinging pendulum. And this is gonna put us into what's called the grassy court. And in here is a couple characters that we need to grab. The first one is done by shooting all of the 10 candles that are scattered around the outside of the grassy court. So there's 10 of them. So you can see I've already shot a couple when I was previously paying, probably this one right here. But they're they're not hard to you know get. There's literally 10 of them all around the edge of the room. You can't miss them as long as you stay on the outside. Just shoot all 10, and once you shoot all 10, you'll get your next character. After you've gotten that character, you'll see some pixies holding a chest on the left-hand side. Just go ahead and blast them with the mobilist, and the chest will fall, releasing some. And the chest will fall, which you can shoot, and then it will release some Lego pieces that you can subsequently build a stairwell or tower, whatever you want to build, in order to be able to reach the next character that's up above it. Again, keeping our dark magic character. Hopefully, you still have your dark magic character with you. There's a chest on the right-hand side. Use dark magic on that, and that will essentially spawn a seed. Using Wingardium Leviosa to water the seed will then spawn a plant that you can hop on, and someone can use you know Wingardium Leviosa to kind of launch you up to the next character in this area. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to open up the gate that's in the back of this room to be able to access the Owlery. There's actually a Bogart chest kind of all the way towards the screen. It's difficult to see unless you walk all the way towards the screen. So I wanted to show you that there's a Bogart chest. Just cast Ridiculous on that. That will give you the, you know, key or, you know, handle, I guess, that you need to use when guarding Levios on to get into the Allery. So just kind of head all the way to the end of this path. And eventually you're going to be on the bottom level of the Allery. The first thing that you can do is just walk towards this you know, parchment that's held by two owls, just simply walking towards it will free your next student in peril. 
You'll also notice a rolled up bridge that's sitting on the ground to the right. Simply use Wingardium Leviosa on that and it will fly around the room for a little bit, eventually landing in a place that you can climb it in order to get your next character. All right, so you're gonna have to do a couple things in this room in order to get to the point where you can access the second level, um, which is done by having these owls kind of carry you up on this platform. Again, you're gonna have to do some, you know, some things to access that. But once you get to the second level, you can use Wingardium Leviosa on this feather and you can tickle this painting who has a very powerful sneeze. He will sneeze and blow a hole in the wall. It's pretty funny. Um, but essentially after that's done, you can use Wingardium Leviosa on the things that spawn. And once you do that, uh, the golden brick will appear for you to grab. Also in this room is three records that you need to play. So the, uh, you know, from where that golden brick was, if we head over to the right hand side, you'll find one record just sitting right next to this chest here. And you need to put the record onto it and let it play, not for very long, but you know, just a little bit. And then you actually have to take it off by shooting it again. So once it's played for a little bit, just shoot it and the record that you put on there will come off. And the second record is in that chest that we busted that was actually right beside it. So that's two. And so again, play for a little bit and then shoot it. And then the third one's actually really hard to see, but it's in this like brown cabinet all the way on the right. If you shoot it, it'll kind of open up a little bit and then you can cast Wingardium Leviosa on it to put it onto the record player. So once you've played all three of them, then the character will spawn right there. All right, so we need to drop down to the first level again, and this time we're going to go to the grandfather clock with Hermione, and we're gonna insert the time turner version of this room. So as soon as you go into the time turner version of this room, you should see uh, a student peril stuck in the you know bird fountain here. Just shoot him with any spell, and it will unstick him, and you'll save your next student in peril. From that student in peril, if you look to the right hand side, you should see a little cabinet that has a lock on it. Use Reducto on that lock, and then you can use Wingardium Leviosa on the cabinet to dunk out, you know, dump out some pieces. Use Wingardium Leviosa on those pieces, and that will allow you to build a plunger-like chair that you can hop on, and we can go around and we can clean up all the bird poop that is on the floor. And once you clean up all five of those, you'll get your next character. So go ahead and hop off that. You can see these three male items that are sitting on the floor here, and each of them have a colored Lego on it. You need to put the piece of mail in the, you know, mailbox, so to speak, that has the same color. Once you put all three in there, some owls will come down and take those away and will also spawn your next golden brick. Again, similar to the non-time turner version, you're gonna have to do a couple steps in order to access the ability to go up to the second floor. But once you get to the point where you can go up to the second floor, what you need to do is use Wingardium Leviosa on this piece over here, which will fix this camera, and it will project onto the wall an image of a red brick. Then you can use Wingardium Leviosa to pull that out of the image and subsequently take it to your owl for your next red brick. All right, from there, you can see a plant in the window. Just shoot that with any spell, and it's essentially gonna grow into a large plant, and that's gonna cause, again, this guy who has a super powerful sneeze. He's gonna blow through the wall again, and we're gonna have some more pieces here that we can use when Guardian Leviosa to fix the record player, you know, the player that we're using in the normal version. And once you fix that, another character will spawn right in front of it. All right, so moving on back to the clock tower courtyard again for reference. This time we're gonna head towards the screen into the left-hand side. And when you get in here, go into the gates and that's gonna put you at the Quidditch training field. The first thing that we're gonna do is use Hermione and use her animal Crookshanks. I mean, technically 
Uh, actually, you have to use this because I think it forces you to have these characters in this area. But use Crookshank to dig the five dig spots that are scattered around this area. And when you do that, your next character token will spawn. All right, so in the same Quidditch training field, there's a chest with a lock that you can blow up with Wingardium Leviosa. When you do that, it will spawn some golden rings throughout the Quidditch training field. And what you need to do, you need to hop on a broom and simply fly through all of these golden uh, circles. <laughs> I'm not the best flyer, but it doesn't matter which way you go. You can go, you know, from the left or the right. But as long as you go through them, they will explode. And when they do, you'll get a golden brick and you will also get your next character token. So you're going to get both the brick and the character token for doing all of those steps. All right, so from the Quidditch training field, we're going to exit that. And now we're going to go up this pathway here and we're going to enter the Hogwarts greenhouse. In the greenhouse, um, there's only one collectible in this room here and it's on the back wall here. It's a golden brick. Just jump on top of this cabinet here and that will allow you to jump up and grab the golden brick that's right there. All right, so go ahead and go through the door that's just right there to the left and you'll be in a hallway that's in between two of the greenhouses. Up that hallway on your left, big chest, can't miss it, a lock that you need to shoot with Reducto in order to get our next character. So now go to the right, that door is kind of a little difficult to see, but it's gonna put you in kind of the second room of the, you know, Hogwarts greenhouse. You're gonna to have to do a bunch of steps and destroy a bunch of stuff, but eventually you're gonna get a strength potion. Again, this is a potion that you have to activate in order to do this step. But once you are able to use the strength potion, pull this lever here and you will save the next student in peril. After you save that student in peril, some extra leaves will spawn out of the room that he was in and you will actually be able to build a staircase that connects the you know bottom and top levels. There's also gonna be a mandrake in the room that the student in peril was in. And there's also a couple others on the bottom floor that you probably used earlier while you were doing some things. But what you need to do essentially is take all of those mandrakes up that newly formed plant staircase and put them into uh, the bear, you know, the baskets up there. And once you put all three mandrakes into the baskets, the red brick will spawn. And now you can take that back downstairs and give it to the owl to collect our singing mandrake red brick. All right, so progressing on to that hallway that was two, you know, between the two greenhouses, we're gonna go all the way back to that big, you know, big wooden door into the Hogwarts, uh, you know, garden shed. And in here, if you go to the top floor, you'll see a Bogart chest. Of course, as we do with all of our Bogart chests, cast Ridiculous on that. And once you do, it will eventually explode and you'll get your next character. <laughs> From that chest, we're gonna kind of jump over this gap here so we can land on this other platform that has this cabinet where we can grab some earmuffs. We definitely are gonna have to do that because we have to grab a mandrake and we're gonna take this mandrake around the room and bust five you know, pieces of glass. And once we break all of those, we will get our final character in this little area. So there's one to the right, one near the door, one on the left underneath the platform, and then the other two are on the left-hand platform, uh, kind of all the way around the edge. So there's one right here, and then the last one's all the way where the Bogart chest was. All right, so we're gonna make our way back to the clock tower courtyard. And again, this is for East sake. So we know where we are. One thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have a character that has dark magic. So if you don't, uh, you probably don't because you went into that Quidditch training area. It, it spawns you with Ron and Hermione and Harry. So if you had one, it probably took it away. So use that Polyjuice potion and make sure we have a dark magic character. And now we're gonna head to the right 
Um, we're going to go back through this outer corridor that we had been in previously, and we're going to go all the way to the right-hand side this time, through this little grassy field, and eventually we're going to cross the bridge that's going to lead us out to the Hogwarts grounds. Okay, so we're basically going to the outdoor section of the Hogwarts area in this game. And the first thing that we're going to do, as soon as you get to the Hogwarts ground, is you'll notice these big, you know, black kind of rock structures that have some bird poop on them. Well, they're all kind of broken and laying down. You essentially need to use Wingardium Leviosa to pull them out of the ground or stand them up, whatever you need to do. But once you use Wingardium Leviosa and kind of lock all three into place, then you can use Wingardium Leviosa on these brooms to wipe off the bird poop. And once you wipe all of that off, the golden brick will spawn right here on this dirt mound for you. All right, from that golden brick is our next student in peril. This was actually a student in peril I'd already previously collected just in my normal gameplay. It's really hard to miss, but it's right here outside of Hagrid's hut. You're gonna see a student in peril who's gonna be trapped in some devil's snare. So it's gonna be around this area. You just need to use your Lumis Solum on him to save him. So it's gonna be right here um, at his hut. So let's head back up the mound here and scattered along the path on the way to the Quidditch fields, you're gonna find these little discs that you can use Wingardium Leviosa on. And eventually that's gonna make a cloud that you can then use Wingardium Leviosa on to kind of spray along the water here and create these four patches of flowers. Once you create those four patches of flowers, you will then subsequently destroy all of them with Wingardium Leviosa. And once you've destroyed all four of them, your next red brick will spawn which you can take back to the entrance of the Hogwarts grounds in order to collect our fast dig red brick. From that red brick, there's four carrots that are stuck in the ground throughout the Hogwarts grounds area. You're basically looking for, you know, these just plants, like nothing else sticking out. It's just the leaves of the carrot because there's a lot of stuff that are in the ground, for instance, like this, this like uh, pumpkin right here, right? But you want to find the ones that are just the plant. And I'm showing you all them here, but there's four of them. And once you pull all four out of the ground, you'll get your next character. All right, so right beside that fourth carrot that we pulled out of the ground, you can see that there's three kind of dragon heads that look like they have firecrackers attached to them. Indeed they are. So you just need to shoot the blue one with any spell, it's nothing special. If you just shoot the blue one, it will launch up and it will eventually leave a character token up in the sky. So when you come into this section, originally there's gonna be some pixies that are holding this pumpkin. You need to shoot them with Immobilus, and when you do, it will then create this pumpkin vehicle that you can use to fly up to these character tokens. So that's how you're gonna be able to get up to them. So let's make our way back to the rockets though, because the other two, you can't just shoot. The second one, or the red one, you're gonna have to have a character that has dark magic. Again, that's why we brought him here, to remove the rocks around it. And once you remove those rocks, then you can shoot it and again it will launch up into the air and we will get another character token once it explodes and similarly like the last one just use your flying pumpkin to go up there and grab it the final dragon kind of firework has some you know silver stone locks on it um, as always just shoot the silver things with reducto and then you will be able to shoot that one and then it will again launch up in the sky and create our third and final dragon firework collectible All right, so once we've got everything in Hogwarts grounds, we're gonna to progress to the right-hand side near Hagrid's hut, go through this fence, and you're going to be in Hagrid's garden. And there's gonna be some things that you can do in here, but the first that we're gonna do is use Wingardium Leviosa on the three brown mushroom patches, one to the left, one to the back right, and one on the foreground on the right-hand side. Once you interact with all of those, you'll get your next character token. To the left, you'll notice that you can shoot a, you know, picnic uh, blanket and also this picnic basket. You'll be able to use Wingardium Leviosa on it and it will essentially scatter some plates and some food throughout the blanket. But once it's all set up, you will be able to use Wingardium Leviosa on it again and a student will throw out a seed. Once that seed kind of comes out, you then need to use 
Wingardium Leviosa on that, or just shoot it, sorry. Just shoot it and it will create a pumpkin. Then use Wingardium Leviosa on that pumpkin and it will blow up, almost like a pumpkin hot air balloon that will then pick up the basket and fly away with it. And when the student flies away, you will get credit for saving your next student in pair. After you do a bunch of steps in Hagrid's garden, you'll get a cutscene because you probably noticed that Ron's back there being sick, throwing up snails. But essentially after you do some steps, you'll have a cutscene that you have kind of fixed him of his illness and the game's automatically gonna spawn you back onto the bridge. Once that happens, make your way back into Hagrid's gardens and when you come back, again, he'll be back there throwing up again, but this like boiling pot right here will now have a golden brick for you to collect. After we've gotten that golden brick, go to the right hand side and you should see a chest over there that with a lock that you can shoot with Reducto. Once you shoot that with Reducto, it will be a um, chest that you need to cast Ridiculous on. So whatever character you have, you need to cast Reducto or Ridiculous on that Bogart chest for your next character. Just to the left of that character is a grandfather clock. So again, we're gonna use Hermione to enter the time turner version of this clock. Now I had already previously come in here, unfortunately, and had collected this stuff prior to getting this recording. So I'm just gonna kinda have to describe to you where these all are in this section. Unfortunately, this was the only section like that. There's gonna be a dig spot right here where I'm at with, with Harry that you need to use Fang in order to dig up a character. On the left-hand side, there's going to be a lock that's silver that you need to use Reducto on. And then you see this ax right here that's to the left of the stairwell. You'll then hit that ax and that's gonna spawn another character token. On the right, there's gonna be a student that's stuck under a pumpkin um, over here, kind of where I'm at right now. You simply have to shoot the pumpkin and you're gonna free that student in peril. Then over here to the left, you're gonna have to do several steps. You're gonna have to move a scarecrow um, ahead onto a scarecrow. And then you're gonna have to dig the ground and destroy a bunch of pumpkins that spawn and use Hagrid to pull this heavy chain that you can see right here. That's gonna kinda create a lot of parts for you to build a fireplace and there will be an egg in the area that you will subsequently put into the fireplace which will be right over here to the left and when you do that, you'll get your next golden brick. So again, this is the only area, unfortunately, that I kinda had already probably did everything and I didn't have it recorded but with those explanations, you should be able to find everything pretty easily. So once you've done all that, head back out to the Hogwarts grounds and we're gonna go to the right hand side and you're gonna to get to the lake. You're gonna be in a large stairwell so just kind of make your way all the way to the bottom of that stairwell and when you get all the way to the bottom you'll see three wooden crates. Go ahead and destroy those wooden crates and once you destroy all of them you will be able to build the dock and once you build the dock you will automatically free the next student in peril. Also, by building that dock, it will also spawn your next character token at the end of the dock, so be sure you walk down there and grab that. Just behind the dock that you just built, you'll see a fishing rod sitting in the grass here. If you use Wingardium Leviosa on that, you'll pull some pieces onto the grass, and then you can use Wingardium Leviosa on that to build a couple frogs that will then hop back into the lake. Once they're back into the lake, we can walk down there and hop on one and use it to ride through all of the algae checkpoints. And once you ride through all of the algae checkpoints, you will get a next golden brick at the end of the pathway. All right, so heading back up to the grassy area at the bottom of the stairs, you should see some moles kind of coming out of the ground. You simply have to shoot it. It will bury itself. It will come back out somewhere else. You just kind of have to follow it. You're gonna have to shoot it about four times, but once you get to the fourth time and it's all the way at the back right area, it will subsequently go underground for the rest of time and you will get your next character token. All right, so heading back to the Hogwarts grounds, now we're gonna progress kind of to the left-hand side towards the Quidditch pitch. All right, so you'll know you're heading the right way if you go through all of the you know house flags kind of standing here. 
So you're going to make your way to the Hogwarts Quidditch pitch. The first thing that we're going to do is get our next student in peril, which is immediately to the left hand side. You're going to see him standing up on this billboard. What you need to do is go to the right hand side and you'll see kind of like a parchment that you can use when Guardian Leviosa on. That's going to pull it out and create almost like a safeguard for him to jump down and land in. So we'll just hold down your spell until it puts it there permanently and then he'll jump down and you'll save your next student in peril. All right, so after him, you probably notice all of the house flags that are kind of flying in the area. There's four green ones and they're actually gonna be lowered. So I've already raised these. There's four green or four Slytherin flags that you need to use when Guardian Levios on. When you raise all four of those, it will spawn a character token. Similarly, you're going to see five Gryffindor flags, which are the yellow and red ones. So again, I'm going to jump around all of these. There's four on the same path as the Slytherin ones. So again, use Wingardium Leviosa to raise those. And the fifth and final one is over near the billboard where we saved our student in peril. So once you raise all five of those, you'll get another character token. So heading to the right a little bit, you'll see this big tent here. There's gonna be a bench on the right hand side. What you need to do is put a character on that bench and another character will use Wingardium Leviosa to raise you up and allow you to be on top of the bench, which you can use Wingardium Leviosa on this little trap, which will release a Quidditch ball and ultimately land in the bottom, close the chest and put a golden brick for you to collect on top. All right, from that golden brick, we're gonna head to the right-hand side. You're gonna see a pretty cool popcorn uh, dispensary. Looks pretty awesome. But to the left and right are gonna be some corn stocks that you need to use Wingardium Leviosa on. Um, so if you just want to use Wingardium Leviosa, it will automatically take them up there and drop them into the popcorn. And once you put all four of them, it will pop, 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 pop. And eventually, you'll get your next character. All right, so after we've collected everything in this portion of the Quidditch playing fields, we need to head to the grandfather clock on the left-hand side near the billboard and enter the time turner version of the Quidditch pitch. The first thing that you need to do, you'll see a dig spot right in front of you. So whip out Crookshanks and dig that up. And that's going to be able to be built into a music stand. So go ahead and use Wingardium Leviosa on that and you'll build a music stand in front of all these instruments that are in this gazebo. So once that's there, then you'll be able to use Wingardium Leviosa on the book that's to the left that will open up to be essentially, I guess, musical notes. And then once that's there, you can stand in front and you can be the composer just with using your Wingardium Leviosa spell, which will put a golden brick for you to collect in the gazebo. All right, so moving on, if you go to the right hand side, you should see a chest with a silver lock. You simply shoot the, you know, the silver lock with your Reducto spell and then you can use Wingardium Leviosa on the chest and it will dump out some pieces as well as a student in peril to save. From that student in peril, if you head to the right, you'll notice this big block of white Legos that's supposed to represent ice. There's also a chisel right beside it. Use Wingardium Leviosa to chisel out all that ice and once you've chiseled all of it away, it will spawn another red brick for you to collect. So once you kind of chisel all that away, grab that red brick and then you can take it over to the owl who's on the left near the instruments in order to collect the stud magnet red brick. From the owl, we're gonna head back to the right hand side where the similar popcorn machine was, there's gonna be some more dig spots for you to dig up with Crookshanks. So dig that up and you're gonna be able to build a cloud with a sun and you're gonna use that to kind of give water and sun to the corn plants. And once you've done that, then you can use Wingardium Leviosa on those to drop them into the corn uh, kind of stand here which will spawn another character. All right, so progressing back now, we're you know from the Hogwarts grounds, we're gonna go back into the castle, back into this corridor. We're heading all the way back to kind of 
the house lobby okay so this is the main house lobby this time we're going to go to the bottom floor and go through the middle doorway and that's going to bring us to the great hall entrance so this is the great hall entrance here um, the first thing that we're going to do is collect a student in peril which is going to be up high to the left behind a house banner so you kind of press you know press and hold x so you can look up there and when you shoot that you're going to free your next student in peril Similar to that Great Hall banner, there are three others, again, to represent all the houses. There's going to be one to the right-hand side that you need to shoot. Again, it's high up, so you need to aim up there. So you can see that says four of four. The first two are right here. So if you kind of head towards the screen, you can see the Ravenclaw here and the Hufflepuff here on the right. So that's all four of them that you need to shoot. And once you shoot all four, you're going to have a golden brick for you to collect. From that golden brick, if you head towards the screen um, and all the way to the right hand side, you'll have probably done this earlier in your playthrough, but behind this stairwell is a character. You can't miss it, it's right here behind this stairwell. Also, you should have your dark magic character with you still. I like to bring Tom Riddle, he's good for a lot of things, but Take him all the way to the left-hand side of the Great Hall entrance and you'll find a cabinet that you can use Dark Magic on. Use Dark Magic, and once that explodes, you'll get your next character. All right, so from that character, now we can enter into the Great Hall itself. And as soon as you walk into the Great Hall, on the left-hand side, high up, so over here, you'll see this spider web. Um, I've already saved him earlier in my in my playthrough, but it's easiest if you kind of jump up on this table here and then hold X for your spell. You see this spider well, you know, web right here up in the left. There, you're gonna have a student in peril there, and all you have to do is shoot the spider web to save it. Huh. All right, so if we go all the way to the back tables of you know the great hall where all the teachers sit, on the left hand side, you're gonna see some piles of bricks. All you need to do is use X to turn those into a turkey, and that turkey will kind of eventually just bust on its own, and it will spawn this red brick right here. So I'd already kind of interacted with those bricks, but it's right here, and you will pick up that red brick, and once you pick it up, take it over to the owl on the right-hand side. Right beside where you turned in that red brick is a silver platter that you can break with Reducto for our next character. Similarly to that silver platter, there's also an identical silver platter on the left-hand side to the left of the table. So use Reducto on that to get our next character. Now for our next golden brick in this area, you're gonna find six sets of green cups that have a pitcher next to them. So one is on the teacher's table and you wanna fill those up with that red drink, right? So I've already filled up that one. I'll show you the other one. So if you just walk up to it and shoot it with X, the pitcher will fill up the cups. So you can see there's one on the center left table, one on the far left table. You can see that there's one right here on the center right table, which I've already hit. And then there's two on the far right table, one here, and then one all the way, you know, kind of forward towards the entrance a little bit. So once you interact with all six of those, the gold brick will spawn above the tables in what seems like an unobtainable area. But if you go to the back of the tables and shoot all of the green plates that are at the edge of the table, that will actually create the path that you need in order to get up to the gold brick itself. All right, so exiting the Great Hall and going back out into the Great Hall entrance, this time we're gonna head to the right and we're gonna go up that wooden spiral staircase. And that's gonna take us into the bathroom hallway that leads to the boys and girls bathrooms. Once you're in here, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go to the left and use a book character on this cabinet and what that's going to do is that's going to plop out some pieces and you can use, you know, use Wingardium Leviosa on those pieces to create a little cabinet. Once you have built the cabinet, then shoot the cabinet to get your next character. All right, so from that character piece, you kind of just progress through the bathroom all the way to the upper level of the bathroom area. And eventually you're gonna to get to this 
portion that has a piece that you can use when Guardian Levios on, but you need to have all of your um, you know, characters up here because the second or person is going to move these red blocks as you progress this piece through this little maze. So just use Wingardium Leviosa and kind of travel around and eventually we'll pop out of this hole here. Once you get it out of the hole, just shoot it. It will turn into a snail and it will make its way and eventually leave a gold brick for you to collect. From that golden brick, we're gonna head to the right hand side on the bottom level. Eventually you'll see the boys bathroom that has a silver lock on it. As always, cast Reducto to bust that lock go into the boys bathroom the first thing that we're going to do in the boys bathroom is we're going to go down to the showers and you'll see that two of them are missing their shower heads so use wingardium leviosa to attach those onto their respective showers once you put all of the heads then you can shoot all of the levers that are beside the shower heads and all of them will turn on eventually opening the middle and showing you a red brick, uh, brick that you can collect so take that back upstairs and give it to the owl in order to collect it From where we dropped that red brick off at the owl, just head to the right, you'll see two green stalls. You probably hear this guy here puking his brains out, but once you shoot the left hand stall, walk in there and then walk out. Eventually he'll walk out of the stall and you'll save your next student in peril. After you've saved that student in peril, head back down to the lower level and just to the right of these green cabinets, you'll see a green trash can that you can shoot. Shooting it will uh, release some spray paint that you can use Wingardium Leviosa on to put some graffiti on the wall. And once you do that, you'll get your next character piece. All right, so heading back into the main hallway, um, the next area that we're going to go to is the library and the way that you get there is by uh you know using ridiculous on the bogart chest that's right here in the main hallway and that'll get you this green key that will allow you to open up this lock here and go into the library itself so once you've opened that up and you go into the library immediately on your right hand side you should see a you know silver lock that you can cast reducto on once you shoot that with reducto then you can use wingardium leviosa to get the wooden bar out of the way the gate will open and some pieces will spawn allowing you to build a radio you do need to shoot the radio in order to spawn a little sequence of dancing skeletons but once you shoot the radio ultimately your next character piece will spawn So for our next collectible, you need to kind of shoot this covering here on the left that's to the left of that radio, and eventually that will have a cabinet that you can interact with Wingardium Leviosa. When you do that, a book will come out, eventually dropping a torch on the ground. You can use that torch to light the statues that are on the right side of the room. Once you have lit both of those, you can go to the statue that's near this painting and shoot it. When you shoot it, it'll actually shoot that flame into the wizard. It'll catch his cape on fire, or catch his butt on fire or something, and he will run to the other painting that's at the front of the library and stick his butt in to cool off, spraying some water out of the painting, watering these flowers that will now be here for you to use. So once those are there to use, head to the front of the library and you can jump up on the leftmost flower and one of your teammates will use Wingardium Leviosa to push you up to your next character. All right, you're gonna have to do some steps in the library in order to activate the aging potion. Um, but eventually, once you've kind of got all that done and you can interact with the aging potion, then you will then be able to get past the aging barrier and into the second room of the library. And the, in here, um, there's a couple things that we need to do, but again, make sure you're bringing a dark magic character as well as a book character into this room. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna head all the way to the back. You're gonna find a green, red, and a yellow book and you need to use Wingardium Leviosa to place these books in the proper place in the bookshelf. And once you place all of them in the proper place, a red brick will spawn. And now you can take that red brick back to the entrance where the owl is to get the red brick detector.
once you've put that there, now we're going to head back to that cabinet that you saw in the back right of the room. So make sure you have Hermione for this. Interact with that cabinet. And when you interact with that cabinet, it's going to pop some pieces out that you can use when Guardian Leviosa on in order to build a vehicle. Building that vehicle will also make five books randomly kind of scattered throughout the room. So you need to hop on the vehicle and just drive over all five of those books which will collect them in this cart that you're kind of driving around in. Once you collect all five of those books, a character will spawn at the doorway all the way to the back of the room. All right, from that character, if you go over to the left and kind of hop on this cabinet, you should, you know, you should be able to use dark magic up on this wall here that's on the second story. The reason I say stay down here is because that's going to spawn a spider that's going to jump down here. So just interact with dark magic from here, and then you can shoot that spider on the, you know, bottom level. Once you do that, then you're going to go all the way to kind of the entrance of this room, get on this yellow book, bounce to the second level. And when you're up here, by interacting with that dark, uh, you know, that dark magic wall, it will spawn a Death Eater. So then you need to kill that Death Eater with Harry, subsequently kill the bee that's going to spawn. And once you've done all of that, a next character spawn will spawn right where the Death Eater was. The next thing that we're going to collect is a student in peril. If we head to the bottom right of the screen and shoot this red book that's sitting in the bookcase, uh, by shooting it and then interacting with it Wingardium Leviosa, it will actually spawn a dig spot on the ground in the library, which is pretty cool, but I guess it's magical. So go ahead and use uh, Hermione to get out Crookshanks and dig that dig spot. And what that dig spot is going to do is going to create a ladder that we can access the student in peril that you can kind of see up at the top of the screen. What is actually trapping them, ho is a mandrake. So we need to go back to the left-hand side, use this yellow book to go up to the second level again. And you saw that ghost up here earlier, so if he's here, just shoot him. But then you'll get access to this cabinet that's on the left alcove of the room. Put your earmuffs on, and now we can climb the ladder that we just built and get the mandrake out of the way and put it in a basket in order to save our student in peril. After you save that student in peril, our next golden brick is going to require us to shoot three brown wizard hats that are scattered around the library. The first of which is immediately to the left of the student in peril that you just found. The second one is going to be on the left hand side up on the railing. You can see it up there right now, but you need to kind of, you know, take the books to get up here again and shoot this wizard hat right off the rail. And then the third one is going to be to the left of the doorway that's all the way at the back of the room and it's going to be held by the pixies so you're going to see me run over here and you're going to see some pixies holding this book or whatever you just need to shoot them with immobilis and when you do it'll spawn the wizard hat on the floor here for you to shoot once you shoot that wizard hat you'll be able to collect your golden brick So let's make our way back to the Hogwarts main lobby. This time we're going to exit to the left, which is going to be us to the Hogwarts class lobby. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head all the way to the right hand side, and that's going to bring us into the divination courtyard. In this courtyard, you're basically going to have to search for a bunch of potions, you know, ingredients again. You have to do this. Uh, but once you get all of the strength potion ingredients in this pot, you can drink it get your strength and pull this chain here by pulling this chain it's going to spawn a bunch of hoops in the in the sky similar to the quidditch training courtyard you just need to fly through all of these hoops and when you've flown through all of them your next character token will spawn right in the middle um, up at the top to fly to All right, so once you've done that, once you've successfully done that, that strength potion will actually turn into a polyjuice. So go ahead and use that because we do need to have a character that has a key ability. And as always, we're bringing our 
uh, Harry as well as a dark magic character. So the thing is, make sure you bring Grip Hook or somebody that has the ability to use vaults. And you're going to exit into the divination room itself. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to switch to your Grip Hook character, your key character, and on the, you know, you're going to head to your right. You should see this vault over here. Interact with that, and it'll spawn a character. Immediately to the right of that vault is another cabinet that you can use dark magic on. Using dark magic on that will spawn another character. Alright, so let's head back to the Hogwarts class lobby. And in this class lobby, there's a couple things that we're going to collect. The first thing that you're going to notice is a, you know, student holding a character token in his hand, kind of dancing around. You do need to target him just with your X ability and shoot him. And once you shoot him, he's going to kind of run away and you need to shoot him again. Eventually, he's going to run next to this kind of basket over here that's to the left. Once he's here, use Wingardium Leviosa on the basket to make a snake head pop out and that will scare him off and he'll leave the character token for you to grab. All right, next up is another character token and we need to use a mandrake for this one. So head to the right hand side of the class lobby on the second level, you'll see this cabinet that you can hop in to get your earmuffs. Once you get your earmuffs, head to the left hand side and go to the second level again, where the mandrake should be in this basket because you probably used this earlier in your story playthrough. But go ahead and take him out of the basket and you're gonna find five glass things that you need to break up here. Those three to the left, the fourth is right there on the edge of the stairway, and the fifth in the corner. And the sixth and final one is actually on the first floor, right here in front of this light post. Once you break all of those, you'll get your next character. Alright, so the next thing that we need to do is we're going to get our next golden brick, but we need to use our Polyjuice Potion and make sure that we're bringing uh, Hermione over here because we're going to need her animal in order to collect this golden brick. But once you have all of that, to the left of where we put that mandrake back in the basket, um, as you're heading to the dark arts classroom, you should see this area over here. Now I've already built this, but you'll have to use Wingardium Leviosa to build this large H. And once you build that, then you can shoot the silver H with your Reducto spell. And when you do that, it's gonna blow this wall away and you're gonna see a animal tunnel in the background. The first thing that you need to do is use Wingardium Leviosa to connect this you know, bottom of the tunnel back together. After you've done that and you have Hermione over here, bring out Crookshanks and put him in the animal hole and take him all the way to the end when, you know, Tom Riddle gets out of the way, you know, get Crookshanks into the tunnel and have Crookshanks go all the way to the end and it, and it just kind of hit this chain and it will automatically make this big chest fall down and break and that'll be where your gold brick is. All right, so from this animal tunnel area, there are uh, eight torches that we need to light in this room. The first one is on the left-hand side, all the way on the top level, and you can see the second one right here on the left of the stairway, and then the third one is kind of on the right side of that same stairway, so that's three of our uh, torches. And if you go to the right-hand side, you'll find a, another torch right here on the left of that stairway. You're gonna find another one on the right side of that stairway. And again, go up. These are kind of identical to the left and right, right? The three that are on the left and the three that are on the right here. So that'll be your, you know, six of eight. And then the last two are on the right-hand side on this wall here beside the chalkboard and all the way near the entrance to the main lobby. All right, so from that last torch, we're gonna head up the right-hand stairwell, kind of head around this path, and you should see these three golden statues. Hold X and shoot all of them at the same time, and they'll all kind of bounce around a little bit. You just have to wait. After a period of time, the one that's on your left will eventually fly up in the air and will come back with your next character token to grab. From these statues, we're gonna head to the left-hand side of the room now, actually right near where we were with the animal tunnels. You probably saw this, um, but there's a chest there that you can use dark magic on. So make sure you have tar you know, Tom Riddle or anybody that can use dark magic. So use dark magic on that, it will explode, revealing your next character token.
All right, so moving on, we're gonna head to the trans configuration class side area. So on the top right is the trans configuration room. But when you go in there, you should see a gate to the left that you can shoot with your reducto in order to remove the lock. And you'll be able to go into this side area of the trans configuration classroom. The first thing that you need to do in here is basically shoot all of the kind of uh, creatures that are coming out of these cabinets with your transconfiguration spell. You have to shoot three in a row in each lane. Once you shoot three in a row in each lane, the gold brick will spawn right in the middle of the pathway for you. And also doing that will spawn your next character at, you know, right in front of one of the cabinets. In the same room behind the chalkboard that's in the back right is another character token. All right, so let's head back out to the Hogwarts class lobby, and we're going to be heading to the potions classroom. And we're going to need three different types of characters for this. Um, we're going to need a character that is of the Hufflepuff uh, house, so make sure you select someone from the Hufflepuff house. We also need to have a character that can interact with cabinets like Hermione, so be sure that you bring her in there. And then we also want a character that can use a key. So again, you want a Hufflepuff character, you want a character that can interact with cabinets like Hermione, and we want a character that can use a key like Grip Hook. Once you have all of those, we're gonna head our way to the potions classroom, which is on the middle of the bottom floor, you know, right here. So just head right in here. Now, the first thing is the character, Justin. So uh, you're gonna do this as part of the main story. When you're unlocking the Polyjuice potion, you will automatically unlock this character in this room so once you've done that head to the right and you're going to be in the side area of the potions classroom the first thing that you need to do is interact with the hufflepuff picture to get a key and there's three keys that we need to get in order to get the collectibles in this area and i'm going to show you how to get those keys the first one again is with that hufflepuff character the second one is with a character that can interact with the book cabinet so again we have hermione so have her interact with that and you'll get your second key Our third key, you're gonna have to do a couple steps. The first of which is using Wingardium Leviosa on the gargoyle statues that are to the left and right of this big snake statue that's in the middle um, of this room. So go ahead and do that. And when you interact with both of those, some pieces will break out into the water and you can use Wingardium Leviosa on that in order to build a vault at the base of the snake. So then you need to use your key character like Grip Hook on that vault and the key will fall out of the snake's mouth now you will be able to put the third key into this gate and once you have all three keys in the gate some lego pieces will kind of fall out and now you'll be able to build some paths to get the collectibles that are in this room the first of which is the red brick so build them however you want so that you can jump up onto the ledge that's on the right hand side and then of course once you grab that red brick be sure that you take it to the owl that's right here down in the kind of right side of this ledge here The next two collectibles are going to be on the left hand side so you need to build these legos in a way that you can reach the left side of the platform so you can see this golden brick is behind an aging uh, barrier so you need to go to the potions room before that and drink the potion juice that's in here which is the aging potion juice now i like to go ahead and switch to my other character to get through the door faster because i did find that sometimes if you walk really really slow like the aging potion makes you do sometimes i actually had a hard time getting back to that aging barrier in time to be able to go through it and grab the golden brick so you saw me switch to hermione to get back to that door a little bit faster so that's a quick tidbit if you're having trouble getting back to this in time to get through the barrier but once you grab that gold brick continue left along the ledge you will find a chest that you can shoot and open for your next character Heading back to the Hogwarts class lobby, now we're going to head to the Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. Um, there's two of these rooms actually, but the first one is to the left of that kind of animal tunnel that we were using earlier. And the first thing that we're going to do in this room is we're going to shoot all of the silver structures to get our next golden brick. Um, there are several of these right throughout the room. There's actually seven, but I had already shot several of them prior to me showing you the locations that I'm showing you now, but they're really easy to spot. They're just silver 
kind of structures that are scattered throughout the room. So just kind of go around and use your Reducto spell and shoot everything that has like a little glimmer of silver. The one that you might have trouble is getting this skeleton right here on the left that's wrapped in the Devil Snare. That'll probably be the last one you get, but none of, you know, nonetheless, when you get all seven, you'll get your next golden brick. From that, head to the back left of the room and you'll see a black orb that you can interact with dark magic. So be sure you're bringing a dark magic character in here. And once you use dark magic on that orb, um, you will get your next golden brick. After we turn in that golden brick, there are four torches in the room that we need to use Wingardium Leviosa on. Two on the left hand side, two on the right hand side. And when you interact with all four of those, you will get your next character token. Also in this room are three spider webs that you need to hit. You can see one on top of the stairwell in the back of the room. The second one is in the right hand side in between the two torches that we just interacted with. And the third one is going to be on the left hand side all the way at the foreground of the screen. So you're going to have to hold X and aim up a little bit in order to see it. But once you hit all three, your next character will spawn right in front of the desk here. All right, so heading back to the Hogwarts class lobby, now we're going to go into the second room of the Defense Against the Art, you know, Dark Arts classroom, and that's going to be right here in this room. And the first thing that you're going to be doing in here is interacting with four you know, blue books that are on the ground. So there's four of them. One's here. There's one in front of this cabinet kind of right here. And then the third one is to the left of the left cabinet. And the fourth one is on the back stairwell. If you kind of walk up the stairs, you'll see it kind of sitting on the ledge. It's really dark. That one's kind of hard to see. Um, but once you shoot all four of those, your next character token will spawn in the middle of the room. Alright, and now that we again have our dark magic character, you should see a gate on the back right that you can use dark magic on. Use dark magic on that and you will collect your next character. Alright, and similar to our last defense against the dark arts classroom, there's also four torches in this room that we need to interact with with Wingardium Leviosa. Two on the left, two on the right, and again, once you interact with all four of those, again, another character uh, token will spawn for you. All right, so now we're gonna go into the gear room, which is kind of a secret room that you access in the back of this room by destroying this lock on this chest with your Reducto spell. Once you destroy the lock, you can use Wingardium Leviosa to dump out some pieces that you can subsequently build, which will lead into a pathway into the gear room. Now, the gear room is uh, you know, a little bit different because there's a lot of things that we gotta kinda hit on the way. So we're gonna work on a lot of the collectibles in this room kind of simultaneously. The first of which are seven lamps that are scattered throughout this room that you just need to shoot. And simply by shooting all of them, we will ultimately get our character token. The other thing that we're gonna work on are the Bogart chests. There's five different Bogart chests that of course we need to use our ridiculous spell on. And again, I'll show you all these locations in this room. When you head up the gear to the kind of second level though, the student apparel is gonna be right in front of you in the spider web. So be sure you shoot that spider web in order to free him. The second Bogart chest will be right to his right, trapped in some Devil Snare. So use your Luma Solemn to remove the Devil Snare and of course shoot the Bogart chest with Ridiculous and that'll be your second Bogart chest done. So also while you're up on this uh, platform up here, you can actually see some of the other lights that you can hit. You can hit all three of the ones that you can see here. Um, so that's three more towards our seven of the lanterns. Also, if you hold down your spell, you should see some colored banners on the back wall. There's three different ones that you need to hit. And by hitting all three of those, you will spawn your next character token. Now it will spawn up on that platform to the back. And we'll grab that when we get up there. All right, so after we've done all that, we can kind of drop back down to the first floor, kind of where we entered in. And 
I need to go over and shoot this one light over here to the left. I shot the first two, but again, these, all three of these need to be hit. So you should have six to seven as of now. Um, so now head to the right on this uh, bottom floor, and you're going to kind of jump over these gears. It's a little dark, but, you know, just jump across the gears. You can actually see the seventh and final light that you need to hit right up there, and it will spawn our next character. Again, we'll grab that when we get up there, but make your way up here to where all these gears are. You can grab that character. You're also going to see another Bogart chest that's being held by a pixie. So shoot that with Immobilus and then obviously cast Ridiculous on the Bogart chest. And that'll be our third Bogart chest um, that we have uh, obtained now in this area. Also, go ahead and build the stairs so we can get to the back area of this uh, gear room. But before we go up there, uh, shoot this gear that's in the middle here. And then you're going to be able to interact with the pieces that fall down with Wingardium Leviosa, and you will build kind of a lever that goes underneath this fourth Bogart chest. And once you place that there, the fourth Bogart chest will pop out and you'll be able to cast Ridiculous on that. And now we've got four of our five Bogart chests in this area. So you can see I'm kind of doing all of these on the same time in this particular room because it's easier. But anyway, once you go up the stairs, you can collect the character uh, up there for shooting all those colored banners. And then you're going to have to go around and get all the pieces to the strength potion from all the things you have destroyed in the room. And eventually, once you have them here and you can use the strength potion, you will pull the heavy chain and it will release the fifth and final Bogart chest right here in front of you. And now that you've hit all five, the red brick will spawn down on the first level, which thankfully is right next to the owl that we need to give it to. All right, so head back into the dark, you know, defense against the dark arts classroom. And this time we're going to head to the right. This is actually through that uh, gate that we had destroyed with dark magic. So when you go through there, you're going to be in this dark pendulum swinging room. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is shooting all of the pixies that are hanging on the pendulums. There's four of them in this top, in this top section. So as you make your way across the pendulums, be sure you shoot all of them with the mobilis. And, uh, and once you kill all four of them, you will get your next character token at the end of the top pathway. So just progressing along in this room again, you're going to go downstairs and you're going to go all the way across to the right. As soon as you make it all the way to the end of this area, so to speak, the next character will spawn automatically for you. And then just to the right of that, you should see some pixies that are holding up some pillars. Shoot them with Immobilus. Once you have killed both of them, you know, some things will come crashing down and you'll get your next golden brick. All right, so moving back into the class lobby now we're going to head all the way to the left hand side and that's going to put us into the charms classrooms corridor we're going to head all the way to the left hand side you should see a student trying to jump up and grab this apple off of a shelf but help him out use wingardium leviosa bring the apple to him and you'll save the next student in pair so now we're going to head into the first charms classroom on the right side so the right door um, into lumos and the first thing that you're going to do in here is you're going to shoot four of these kind of slouching candles. Two are right from the entrance in which you came into the room. So one to the left, one to the right. So you can actually see that was my third and fourth one. Uh, the top two, or the other two, I should say, are at the top section of this room. So you're going to have to build some Legos up here. You probably did this in your story. But the other two candles are on the top middle of these two right here. And once you shoot all four, you'll be able to get this character too. So heading back down to the bottom, you are going to need a character that can use a key and interact with these, such as Grip Hook. And once you interact with that vault, you'll see this trap door will kind of go away and you can fall down into the Charms Underground area. Once you're in the Charms Underground area, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to head to the right a little bit, um, kind of past these vents. It's a little bit dark right here, but if you step on the vents, it'll knock you off. So kind of take your time and eventually you'll come to a Bogart chest. Shoot that with Ridiculous and you'll get your next character. Heading a little bit further to the right, again in the same area, we're going to drop down into the sewer-like area of this room. You should see a student in peril trapped by some Devil Snare up against the grate down here. 
All right, so moving on to the second room of this underground area, as soon as you come in here, you should notice a devil snare that is wrapped around like a hand um, that's holding a chain. So use your Lumis Solum on that. The you know devil snare will go away and you'll see this golden brick inside of this cage be halfway hanging down. The devil snare will go to the other side. Again, Lumis Solum on that and the golden brick will fall down for you to be able to grab. Also in here, you should again still have your character that has dark magic, hopefully Tom Riddle, if not Harry, anybody that has Parcel Tongue, but you'll need to use Parcel Tongue in order to interact with this snake wall. But you do need dark magic to interact with the dark orb that spawns, and once you destroy that with dark magic, you'll be able to collect your golden brick, the character token detector. Once you have that, give that to the owl that's sitting on the kind of foreground of the screen right in the middle. So heading back out to the charms kind of uh, classroom, you know, hallway here. Now we're going to go into the left hand side, which is your Wingardium side. Um, in here, you're going to go, you probably, again, you probably already got this just in your normal playthrough. You're in this room kind of to start the game out. But if you didn't get it up on the top, you know, portion of this room, there's some books that you can interact with Wingardium Leviosa. You have to interact with the books twice and it's right there. As long as you interact with them twice, you'll get your next character token. Once you've done that, head back to the bottom and to the left hand side, you'll see a big silver lock that you can destroy with your Reducto spell. And when you destroy that, you'll be able to go into a left charm underground area. Once we go down there, we're in our final section and we're gonna grab our final collectibles in Hogwarts. So this is pretty great. We've made it to the end, it's a long journey. Um, so when we drop down here, one thing I'll mention is I would go to this area last. There are some reports of people being glitched down here and not being able to get out. So definitely save this for last. But when you come down here, we're going to head all the way to the right. Just to the right of the broken dragon, you'll see a student in peril up in some spider web. Shoot that down and that'll be your 26th and final student in peril in the Hogwarts section. From that, we're going to head right just a little bit. You can probably see this dark orb here on your right. Again, make sure you have a dark magic character. Generally, always a good idea, as I mentioned, the whole guide. So now we can get our final red brick, and we're going to take that to our owl all the way to the left of this hallway. Moving on to the right from that, you're going to come to the dragon that has these beige kind of uh, you know stone balls next to it. You need to destroy both of those and then use Wingardium Leviosa to rebuild the dragon. Once you do, your final character token of Hogwarts will spawn right here. And the last and final golden brick that we need to get in this section is obtained simply by jumping on the dragon. And when you jump on the dragon, he will take you out of the, charm to the charms underground area, launching you up to grab the final golden brick and the final collectible in the entire Hogwarts area. So I hope you all found this helpful. It took me a ton of time to put this together, but you know, it's an older game and I was playing through it. And I was like, man, there's really not that great of gods for this. So I made a complete guide. Again, we've done the entire Hogwarts area. We finished the years one through four story missions as part of the collectible guide. So again, hopefully, you know, all of you found that helpful. And as always, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.